Hello everyone, my name's Brian, and welcome to not only an edition of Sweaty Try Hard, but also a viewer request. Liam, friend of the channel, has asked for another Affinity video. If you have a video you would like to see, go ahead and email me at heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. That's heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. As you can see, if it's a deck I already have, it's pretty easy for me to do. All right, so let's get right into it. Affinity has taken on many different forms over the years, but this is the one that you'll see that's most prevalent at the moment. Long-term viewers of the channel will know I've played this in the past. I've also played Azorius Affinity and Mono White Affinity. But essentially what we're trying to do is get all of our zero drops out quickly, to then allow our Frogmites to come in, as well as our Soldier's Companions. The Affinity mechanic also allows us to draw a whole bunch of cards with our Thought Casts, which have straight-up Affinity as well, and Thought Monitors, bodies that also draw us cards. New this time around is is two copies of Urza Lord High Artificer. It allows all of our artifacts to tap for mana if we so need. Also, it just drops another Karnstruct. A big part of this deck is our Karnstructs get so big because so many of the items in our deck are artifacts. That also allows our Cranial Platings, which is the only equipment we're running outside of Nettlesis, which is really more of a creature, to hit super hard. Following that, we also have Springleaf Drums to make sure we hit our mana as quickly as possible, and our Urza Sargus targets, the Shadow Spear Relic of Progenitus, an Aether Spell Bomb, and Gingerbirds. Now, of course, we can also get Welding Jars and our creatures if we so need. The mana base is pretty simple. We have a whole bunch of Artifact Lands in Darksteel Citadel, Mist Vault Bridges to allow our Cranial Platings to attach in the main deck, Tangle Pool Bridges this time because we actually do have a not quite green card in the graveyard, but something that would like green mana, Treasure Vaults just because they're Artifact Lands that come to play untapped, and Urza Saga, which it's so hard in this deck. Now, over in the sideboard. We have Hercules Recalls, which are actually used to save us from a Wrath and Affinity all of our creatures back onto the field. Metallic Rebukes to hopefully stop our opponent from ruining our day. Tormod's Crypt for extra graveyard hate. We do have Relics in the main, but Tormod's Crypts just in case we need to go faster or need more of them, along with a Graph Digger's Cage. A Pithing Needle to stop things like Planeswalkers or otherwise abilities that are not fun. Dampening Spheres to th slow things down. Now, you would think a deck like this would have a problem with Dampening Sphere, but truth be told, we can normally normally play through it, that's how high our affinity count is. And finally, the new cards in Haywire Might. It allows us to take out opponents non-creature artifacts or enchantments, and it straight up exiles them as well. So it's great on that front. And there we have it, a nice, simple affinity deck. Why don't we take on some matches and see how we do? Join me, won't you? All right, and we have lost the die roll. For those of you watching my videos in sequential order know just how often that's been happening as of late. Uh, we can actually Urza Saga turn two with the Springleaf Drum, so this seems quite good. So turn one, we'll play Urza Saga and Springleaf Drum and Ornithopter. And that means turn two, we play a land and get an Urza Saga token out. You can really hyper stuff out. Okay, we're versus Tron, so we do have have to go super fast before essentially they get to turn three. We do have things like dampening spheres in the side, but obviously they're not in our hand right now. So turn one, Urza Saga. Yep. Play a Springleaf Drum. Play an Ornithopter. I think that's all we can do right now because it's one, two, and I can do one more. That's not quite Frogmite mana, so we'll pass. Next turn, our opponent sets up Tron, and then after that, we've kind of... Uh, Kind of lost the advantage. Got an Urza's Tower. So they immediately play into another inscribed tablet. All right, so we're going to see if the old Urza lands or my one of Urza land is better. We get a Welding Jar, which actually makes our dude even bigger, which is great. We'll play an Island, play Welding Jar. Unfortunately, we only have three artifacts at the moment, so we can't get Frogmite out to also tap for mana. But for right now, this works fine. So we're going as fast as we can. We even have four out, so now we can cast Frogmite. And next turn, we try and hit even harder. But for right now, we're kind of at the mercy of them. The good news is Ugin really does nothing against us. Normally when playing against Tron, things like Ugin is pretty brutal, but his Wrath doesn't work. Matter Reshaper. Okay, so it's Eldrazi Tron. The good news for us is next turn we get... Oh, what are they going to keep this time? We get the Shadow Spear. So this is Cavern of Souls, where we're not going to be countering anything. Only Elder Deep Fiend, that's good to know. All right, so we didn't draw a land, but I do think we just create another guy, just based on the board state. I do believe we just get the Shadow Spear in this situation. We can't equip it, but there's been worth moments. One, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do just get to vomit our hand though. If we get Elder Deep Fiend, that's a problem. But right now we went off pretty hard, if we're being honest. If they try and trade with the Frogmite, I'll just regenerate it with Welding Jar. Yep, that's fine by me, opponent. You traded for a zero drop. Mm, they get to put a Cavern of Souls out. So now they actually can Elder Deep Fiend, which is a problem. I thought they were only gonna have one blue mana, but now they're going to have two. Although they don't have an Eldrazi to throw in front of it right now, I have to assume their hand's pretty stacked. This looks like he's just casting an Elder Deep Fiend. Oh wait, no, black, interesting. Void Widower, sure. Neither of the cards in our hand have even mana value. Um, I mean, our things can't block, which we really don't care about. Oh, nope, we win the game. Okay, so we aggroed out pretty hard. We have our Dampening Spheres. I think that's about all we care about. It is Eldrazi Tron, so I don't, th uh, well, maybe the Haywire Mites. Because I suppose we don't need Ginger Brute, and I guess also the Relics don't do anything. So we'll keep Ginger Brute. We'll put in the Haywire Mites. Like the dampening spheres are kind of a haha -ha moment. I guess we can take out a nettle cyst. We can also take out one Urza because they're just slow. And take out one Soldier's Companion and put in Dampening Spheres and try that. We'll see how it goes. All right. So we have some things to put down. We'll go ahead and keep this. We even have the green for the Haywire Mite. The problem is they go first. So whatever they're going to play, a la an inscript inscribed tablet, uh, we don't, we're not able to just turn one, wipe it off the face of the planet. Actually, if we find a um, Springleaf Drum, I guess we can. Urza's Saga. Well, we don't have the Springleaf Drum. So what we'll do is we'll just play out Darksteel Citadel. We'll play out the Haywire Might, play out a Welding Jar. And next turn, we're going to cast the Dampening Sphere, slowing them down a little bit. After that, we're pretty much just going to be, you know, playing off the back of Urza Saga. Keep. They choose to draw a card. They play another Inscribed Tablet. So we are going to shut down their Tron, even though it means we're going to miss one Urza Saga token if we don't draw an untap land. Ooh, we drew a Treasure Vault, so now it doesn't matter, right? Dampening Sphere. Let's all just slow down, guys. No reason to be so hasty. And our opponent has seen enough. That is an easy 1-0. and oh. Let's go on to match two. All right, we actually win a die roll. That's so weird. All righty then. Um, hmm. I guess we can keep this. It doesn't refill itself, but hopefully it's just quick enough to not have to worry about it. So we'll start with Darksteel Citadel, just run out Ginger Brute and just smack. Then turn two, we just play out Urza Saga and just start making tokens. If we can find some like Frogmites and stuff, that'd be great. We even do have blue mana in case we need to find something else. Another Dark Steel Citadel. Well, that just makes me want to play Urza Saga even more. I do wish we had some way of playing something out right now because Ginger Brute's just getting in for one and we are moving a little slow for this deck, but it is the hand we were dealt. Fading Hope. All right, they return Ginger Brute to my hand. Now I actually have something to do with my mana. It's interesting that they would do that to Ginger Brute considering that they know I'm going to have an Urza Saga token soon. Choke Estuary, showing off an Irrigated Farmland, so some kind of Esper Control. Collective Brutality. Oh, is this like a Cheese Fang? Cheese Fang is not something I was expecting in Modern, and I mean, I have Graveyard Hate, but I might not have Graveyard Hate fast enough. And they scoop the match. Weird. I don't think that counts. Let's go to another game. Good thing we lost another die roll. Okay, we're just not winning die rolls. This is not how we roll. Um, uh, Springleaf Drums, Urza, and Soldier's Companion. I don't think so. This looks a million times better. We'll keep this. We'll give up on what, though? So we like our lands. Let's see. I guess we can give up on Rainial Plating off the bat. Because hopefully the Urza Saga tokens just kind of do it for us. Arbor Elf. So they're going to go big fast, and we have no removal. <laughs> So let's see how fast I can go. So Treasure Vault into Ginger Brute, into Memnite, into Ornithopter. And I do have four artifacts on the field. That is not seven, however. We do get to swing with Ginger Brute. Now I kind of wish I still had the Cranial Plating since we're going up against some sort of Titan deck, but I didn't know that at the time. If we draw another low mana artifact, though, we can both Ursa Saga and Soldier's Companion next turn. Yeah, our opponent has a Jingatha. Oh, so it must not be a Titan if they have Jingatha. They are big mana ink to something, however. And truth be told, even just a uh, walking ballista would kind of turn us off right now, because it would get rid of two of our artifacts. Did I just summon walking ballista? Culling <laughs> ritual. Ooh boy. Oh man, that was that was so dirty. I gotta give my opponent credit. I did not have that on my bingo card. 
They just traded in their entire board as well, so I wonder what they're trading up into. Manamorphos, oh my. We are in danger. What is what is going on here? They have almost all the colors of the rainbow. What are you casting? Just an art. I don't believe it's just an Arbor Elf. I don't believe you did that to recast Arbor Elf. They put the companion in their hand. Wait, is that all they're going to do? They were afraid of my zero and one drops. Okay, well, welding jar late to work. It would have been nice to keep one of my artifacts, but here's my welding jar. And next turn, we just start playing Urza Saga tokens and we hope whatever we're up against can win, you know, we can win against it. Because right now, I don't know what our opponent's doing. If that's another culling ritual, I salute you, opponent. Ugh. Wow, this brew is taking us to town, I have to say. Is there going to exile our Urza Saga tokens? That's so brutal. We drew a blue card. We don't have any blue mana at the moment, so this is our only thing we can do. <laughs> I suppose I didn't have to do that right now. I could have done it so that they couldn't have exiled it, but all right. You know, I suppose trading in... Kaya for a token is not a bad thing. What are they doing? Oh, oh just Jingatha. Okay, we knew about Jingatha. So this brew is is really taking us to town here. Another Soldier's Companion. That is quite unfortunate. What do we want? I think we want a Springleaf Drum, as sad as that is. Because we have four artifacts now, so we can tap for blue, and we can thought cast and hope to find more useful stuff. All right, so another Urza Saga. We can't do either of our cards, because one, two, three, four. I mean, next turn, if we survive, but I feel like they just trade in their Kaya to get rid of our construct token. I feel like that's just the play. They come crashing in for six, probably. Yep. All right. So we need to go essentially runner runner with our draw twos. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of artifacts right now. Gris, that's not good. So now they can kill the construct however they so choose. Wow. Okay. And then they're going to start ticking up Kaya. Brutality. So we got dismantled, but we don't... This is a deck that does... If we ran interaction, we'd be in a different boat, but uh, we don't run interaction. So one, two, three, four. That would be five. And then we would have... If we go one, two, make a guy, tap it for blue. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, sweet. So we can either Thought Monitor and Urza Saga... I guess, I guess that's our out, even though they can just keep killing these things. And like, we're playing into sorcery speed removal, but we kind of have to, unfortunately for me. Mon finds some zero drops. Okay, so we found Ornithopter. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, cool. So we can get these out. All right, so we built our board. Even if they have another culling ritual, we get to keep a lot of our stuff. Now, obviously, they're just going to kill the construct with Kaya, but we do have stuff for them. So there goes the construct. We knew that was going to happen. Just going to make a 1-1. One, one. That's fine. They have nothing in hand. If they attack, we just let it happen because we want to kill. Oh, okay. So they saw it too. <laughs> what do we draw? We draw a Frogmite. So that means we make another guy and we go get the Shadow Spear. Uh, we play Frogmite, who's also going to be our land in this particular scenario. So one and then two. Attach the Shadow Spear to, I guess, one of the Soldier's Companions. Play the Tangle Pool Bridge. And now we get to kill most things. So this is going to kill Riss. This is going to attack Kaya. This is going to attack Kaya. They can just eat our Soldier's Companion. That's totally fine. But then they don't have anything. Yeah, okay. So they have a Jingatha. I have a 12-12. So we actually ground our way out of that, which surprises me. Yep, and that's the game. Please do not scoop like that other guy. All right. Against like plain... Well, we do have Planeswalker tech, believe it or not. Uh, do we want a Hercules recall in save our stuff it's probably unnecessary based on what just happened there so we can take out probably the relics because they actively help our opponent and put in what a metallic rebook let's try that so let's try this see how we go all right so we have one land one ornithopter which gets us to two but that doesn't get us to four we're gonna mulligan and see if we can do better this actually is better so we'll keep this i don't think we need three springleaf drums if i'm being honest one springleaf drum is more than enough utopia sprawl fine by me an ornithopter okay Okay, so we get to actually do a lot here. We are going to get uh, dumpstered by a culling ritual, but, you know, we didn't we didn't come here to be a coward. <laughs> Uh, we're actually going to play the Aether Spellbomb, leave the Springleaf Drum in hand for now. Next turn, I don't think they can Culling Ritual, but if they do, 
we honestly are left with a single land. If they play the elf, we are going to bounce it back to their hand. Teferi. Man, there's more planeswalkers in here than I would have thought. Bounce the Darksteel Citadel. Joke's on them. I don't have a second land. I mean, now I do, but it honestly doesn't help at all. Uh, I'll just play the blue. Play Pithing Needle. Name Teferi. That turns off that thing, and now we don't even have to worry about it anymore. Uh, and then we just attack our opponent and just leave the Teferi there, because it doesn't matter. Now, if he Culling Rituals next turn, we get pretty blown out. Mm, I don't like where this is going. Don't like where this is going at all. Okay, red. General F Oh, is that what this deck is? Cranial plating. Sounds good to Brian. So bibbity bobbity cranial plating. And then tap that guy. Put cranial plating on my flyer and swing in. All right. If we can survive one more turn, we got this. But we are kind of uh, flying close to the sun if we're being completely honest. He's shown that he has a card that can just absolutely positively dumpster us, but we're playing for the win. I am laughing a bit that my uh, choosing to use this on Tef and not just kill Tef is apparently uh, mattering to some level. It comes in to hit us, that's fine. It's one less blocker. I feel like there's a wrath incoming though. Whatever this is, I'm not gonna like it. Manamorphose. Okay, so they get to keep going. Now they get to make the black they needed. Yep, okay, so they have culling ritual, which is not great. That's a pretty big swing in our opponent's favor. I'm not gonna lie. Another manamorphose. I don't... Okay, I suddenly don't think they have it anymore. They might still be looking for it because they can still make the mana, but I don't think they would mana morph us twice if they already had it in hand. I don't know how many they have, though. Don't have it. Wear and tear. Okay. Why are they destroying their own enchantment? Because they wanted to make a golem, maybe? A welding jar doesn't do a ton here. We actually have a little bit of time because we're at a high life total. So we'll just go ahead and pass as, eh. Do we go for the win and just draw a card with Aether Spellbomb? Suppose this is not a coward's game and that was the correct move. All right. Okay, so now we just have to survive a couple of turns. So we will use our guys as blockers now, right? Our opponent draws, plays, cracks. Wear and tear again. Oh no, the Urza Saga. Mm. Okay, so the, the second wear tear seems to have done us in here. I'm just going to... I'm going to take this in case we do draw the cranial plating. So if we draw the cranial plating, we still got it. But that's that's where we're at. We draw an ornithopter. Nope, not going to do it. Nowhere, nowhere near what we need. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. All right. Now we know what they're doing. We definitely want dampening spheres. Take out Ginger Brute. Take out what? Take out a Nettle Cyst. Take out the Metallic Rebuke. Now we have our dampening spheres, which should slow them down a little. All right, let's try that. All right, we'd love to play first. Uh, huh. is this fast enough? Turn one, turn two, turn three. I already have the Shadow Spear. No blue mana for the Thought Monitor or the world. Let's try again. Okay, this has some hate pieces. It has some Ornithopters and it has things that hits hard. So we're going to try this and we're going to put back, I believe, the Welding Jar. Play all of our stuff out because if we draw an untapped land, we definitely want to play Dampening Sphere next turn. Right, opponent plays a land, cracks immediately, and goes for a stomping ground. Is it just going to bolt something? Utopia Sprawl. All right, please have an untapped land, because I believe that should turn off Utopia Sprawl. Otherwise, uh, we are in Sad Town. Hmm, Sad Town. So the good news is we play Miss Vault Bridge, and then we do get to cast Thoughtcast. All right, more lands. Uh, we'll just go ahead and pass. Because what's going to happen here is... We're going to play out the Dampening Sphere next turn because it'll it'll stop them for a little bit. But if they get the general down, we're kind of already pretty behind. So I'm just hoping that that blue. So they might they might just play Teferi and bounce one of our land. Nope, they play the general. That was the worst thing that could happen. All right. So play Tanglepool Bridge. Play the, the Dampening Sphere because now this should just produce a single colorless. If I believe because it's going to tap for two or more mana. So that just makes colorless now. So that... Oh, why does that work? Hold on. Whenever it, it adds an additional one mana of its chosen color. I thought Dampening Sphere would have stopped that. Somebody in the comments tell me if that's how that's supposed to work or not. Because I feel like that's not how that's supposed to work. Oh, they, they bounced our Dampening Sphere and now they're just going to get in. We are now just on race mode, unfortunately. I mean, we have enough mana to play the Cranial Plating and get it onto a creature, which is good. I don't know if we're faster than our opponent, though. We're certainly going to find out. Because they're going to hit us kind of hard next turn, but I'm hoping the turn after that, the second Cranial Plating gets them. They're at nine. Let's see how we do. There's a million ways they could blow us out. I mean, wear tear, although there's no, 
They could blow up their own enchantment. No reason not to swing. We draw Memnite. So cast the Memnite. Cast Cranial Plating. They have to do something now because we have two black to put the Cranial Plating on something at instant speed. So we attack with both creatures and we see how they reply. All right. If they have a blowout, they have a blowout. Seems like they're digging. They must have something. So they kill that. That's fine. It only does eight now, which is unfortunate. They go to one. They have one turn to kill us. We have one blocker. So if they have a lightning helix, that's unfortunate. Because if they just lightning helix that thing out of the way, we die to just combat damage. Or I suppose if they have another Teferi, they can just bounce Memnite. Or if they have Kaya, they can just exile Memnite. There's actually a lot of ways we die here. The fact that our opponent is taking this long. Oh no, we win the match. Okay, we are 2-0, and 3-0 and if you count the guy who runs away. I don't know if I bothered to show that game or not. Let's go ahead and go on to our game three. Hey, what do you know? We lost a die roll. My favorite thing to do here on the channel is lose die roll. Uh, this hand's actually pretty sweet. Turn one, play a tap land and a creature anyway. Wait, this is a different guy and he has the first opening start. Uh, I mean, maybe we are just playing against Titan this time because he, he did green saga, but no, no spring leaf drum. So we have to play Memnite and our Mist Veil Bridge. Our opponent seems to be thinking really hard about the Memnite. Okay, <laughs> let's see what our opponent does. I, I feel like this is a Titan deck this time because Utopia Sprawl on green normally means now entering the Titan Tron. Prime time. The uh, Ronas the Indomitable. Okay, I am confused. That's unfortunate though, because it is just going to become a wall for us to not be able to attack past. But for the right now... <laughs> Greenleaf Drum, I don't think that's what we're doing this turn. I think we're playing Granial Plating and trying. Because, like, next turn, what, they play, like, Utopia Stomper? Then, hmm, this is going to be hard. It's going to be quite hard. Because if I play the Springleaf Drum, we can Thought Cast. But I think, rather, I'll just get Cranial Plating on the field. This way, next turn, it's nice and cheap to play. We'll attack for one. I feel like every point of damage is going to matter here. That's why I didn't just play Springleaf Drum. Right, so they're going to play like Topiary Stomper or um, the, the Eldraine, you know, Beauty and the Beast card to make Ronas just turn on. Wait, what? They're drawing five? Man, tonight's been really weird. Oh, there's the Arbor Elf finally. I mean, they do have a full hand, which is scary. Not gonna lie, right? We draw Frogmite, so we do get to just kind of start pooping out stuff, which is Dark Steel Citadel. We just get to cast this. That means we also get to cast Springleaf Drum and we get to make a... We want to do that. I guess we don't have to do that right now. I mean, we could just attack with the Memnite. There's no way they trade. 0% chance they trade. Didn't think so. Because whatever they're going to put in is going to be scarier than what we wanted. Because we're going to have an Urza Saga token and then next turn we can probably just plate up the Urza Saga token as much as we can to try and make it hit really hard. But I have a feeling our opponents, uh, whatever our opponent's doing is going to be bigger and better. Because green does have some scary creatures in modern. I think we're about to meet them. Yeah, opponent, what do you got? I don't like whatever this is. Just a casual nine mana. What are you doing with your casual nine mana opponent? Gigantosaurus. Sure. I mean, if it's just Gigantosaurus, I actually am not super worried all of a sudden. Primordial Hydra. Oh, so that's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger, eh? All right. Well, we, we, we saw the joke. You know, haha -ha opponent, but here's my Urza Saga token, which is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So I think we're just going to... We make a mana. We make a mana. We can attach both of our things, and then we gain a million life. Because Shadow Spear will come out free. We spend two to equip Shadow Spear. We spend one to equip Cranial Plating. We still have one mana. Because we actually get to bounce something, don't... Yeah, okay, we're going to do this. We're just going to float mana, because we're going to use the Aether Spell Bomb to bounce... Gigantosaurus back to their hand. Get the Shadow Spear. All right, so we have some mana to play with. We'll play Tangle Pool Bridge. Now, we do have enough mana just to, you know, like equip up our guy. But I think what we do is we play the Spell Bomb. We Spell Bomb the Gigantosaurus back to our opponent's hand. And we still have two mana. So one mana, two mana. Equip our guy... Make him a 10-10. We had one more mana that would actually be optimal, but we don't. And we just swing in for a lot. They choose to take it, which, you know, I get. Next turn, though, our cranial plating goes on our trample lifelinking creature. And that should be pretty good. They could just replay Gigantosaurus. They're welcome to. In fact, we can even yield because we have nothing we can do. Garrick, that's not great. They immediately go to draw cards. What are they looking for? Because they still have a lot of mana. I mean, don't get me wrong. What our opponent's doing is scary. It's just that... 
you know, Modern Horizons cards are broken. Thrag Tusk. Okay, I get the joke. Thrag Tusk is a card that gains them life. All right, Thought Monitor. So first things first, we definitely want to just equip the Cranial Plating to the Construct. And now we just want to get out stuff. So we'll play Thought Monitor and our opponent scoops. All right, that's really scary. That's really, really scary. So the relics don't do anything. Where are those? Um, ah, uh, what else? The gingerbread sex are pretty good because that can become unblockable. The bounce spell's great. I mean, like, what are we even putting in? We could put in, like, the pithing needle, naming the Garrick. Or we could just bring in metallic rebukes and try and, like, be responsive, I suppose. Let's try that. So this has no lands and is therefore unkeepable. Molly molly. Uh, well, our opponent kept a seven, which is scary. And this, in theory, does stuff. I mean, it has our metallic rebukes. So what do we put back? Now, my brain says Urza, but we have nothing going on. So I'll put Ornithopter back. And we'll just, like, I guess, pretend that we're a very controlly deck. Treasure Vault. Well, unfortunately, we drew a land. I think we're, we're kind of squashed at this point. If we don't draw something soon, the Metallic Rebukes, like doing turn threes, are not terribly impressive. Steel Leaf Champion. Oh, boy. They are just going to aggro us out this game. So that is unfortunate. Well, we do get to counter whatever their next spell is, but they are going to hit us for five. That is unfortunate. We really only have one card that stops that. Uh, so I think I just kept a bad hand is what happened here. I think I am a bad player and I am getting bit hard for being a bad player. If they don't cast a spell, I am going to feel so silly, like aggressively silly. You have no idea. Wow, are you for real? Well, I am a dumb dumb. I am quite the dumb dumb. All right, so we'll play Treasure Vault, and if they do nothing, we will explode the Treasure Vault into a treasure to cast Urza, which feels awful, but it's where we're at. Ronas, well, good news. So blue. Oh, we're not going to be able to do anything anyway. Let's do that. They do get to hit us for five again, though. And unless we draw literally our island, we're not casting Urza next turn. I'm beginning to think the Urzas should just be Nettle Cysts. Yep, hit me for five, opponent. What would be best is, um, I, I guess the island, honestly. Shadow Spear does not do it, unfortunately. But here comes Shadow Spear. Uh, yeah, and we pass. So pretty much, regardless of what they play, we have to just make an Urza token, which is unfortunate. Okay. I'm screaming in. That's what you do. We will block. They must have nothing. All right. So unfortunately, we are going to cat make but a lone treasure token. Alt monitor, you would have been helpful last turn, but for right now, we need our boy. Actually, the good news is Urza tap things for blue. Hey, okay. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. We have an 8-8, but if they have any way of killing the 8-8, we just die. So we're going to equip this guy here to the construct and hope that's enough. If they have a way of just getting rid of all of our creatures or just getting rid of the con- Oh no, we win the match! Wow, that's three and oh, let's go for four. All right, there's no reason for us to ever win Dyro that, you know, winning die rolls is a myth. Uh, this hand is great. Keep. So turn one, we get to play Urza Saga, Memnite, and Springleaf Drum. So Urza Saga. Yep. Urza Saga makes Springleaf Drum. Springleaf Drum cast. And then, look at me, I get to make. All right. <laughs> A relic. So if our opponent is doing anything with the graveyard, we even got that covered. Mountain, island, both from the new set. Oh, it's Storm. Actually, factually, that's a good thing we have the relic now. I haven't seen Storm in a minute, but, you know, you gotta love the classics. Play a Champo, play a Memnite. We have one, two, three, four. We have five artifacts, so we'll just pass for now. Next turn, we'll have an Urza Saga guy, and we'll do some math on whether or not we should make another token or just start smashing in. Now, we don't interact with our opponent at all, and that's actually exactly what Storm wants, is for us to just not interact. Ooh, they could actually win from this point, depending on how many... Okay, so I think they're going to take a minute. I don't think they would have played out the Goblin Electromancer if they planned on winning this turn. Okay, that's good. And okay, we made a 6-6. Six, six. We drew a Frogmite. So I think we just want to attach the Shadow Spear. Equip the Shadow Spear. Uh, we also get to play out a whole bunch of things. wonder if they're just going to... Because they can storm off an instant speed. I wonder if they're just going to do it on my turn because I played so many artifacts. All right, 10-10 Lifelinker. They have to win next 
next turn, we do have a relic if they plan on winning with um, Past in Flames. But now they also need to get their storm, storm count up pretty high. Lifelinking Shadow Spear is, you know, a thing. All right, so they're going to start going off now. I don't know if they can get to storm count 30, though. Now, we'll get rid of this while we can. And obviously, next time, we'll just pop Relic. But we'll get rid of a Ritual out of the bin, which I feel helps. Before they put, like, a land or something. Actually, no, this these older versions of Storm never actually played fetches, now did they? Okay, so here comes Gifts. Oh, Wish. They just get it from the side. What are they going to play from outside the game? Pieces of the puzzle, sure. They can get the Grape Shot and the Gifts. Oh, they choose Gifts on Gives and Gifts on Given. Gifts on Given, sure. Generally, you don't want to give them their Rituals. So, hmm. We'll get rid of the Manamorphose and the Desperate Ritual. So they have a Paretic a Gifts on Given. The minute they cast Past in Flames, though, we just blow up the Graveyard. So it doesn't matter that they have Past in Flames. Paretic Ritual, sure. I guess I would Gifts and go for, like, a Remand and a Grape Shot. But I guess unless they have... I guess they need more Metamorphose. They, they really do need to get the Grape Shot in their hand. Past in Flames. All right, so obviously we can't let this happen. They're going to remand their own Past in Flames to cast it on top of the Relic. Are they going to have enough mana, though? Cast it again, because they have one floating red, and Past in Flames is a four drop, so it's still a two drop. All right, so now, now we can yield, and we can see if they can just get it from here. They are at nine. They lost one Grape Grape Shot and one Remand. Now, normally they have a pretty good stock of Remands, but they normally only have one Grape Shot. They must have a second Grape Shot or they would have just scooped by now. Now, here's the Gifts and Given. It must be like Ritual, Remand, Grape Shot, Metamorphose, right? All right, so put Grape Shot. We don't give them the Rituals. How much mana do they have? I feel like we can't give them the Rituals, actually. Because they can pass in Flames, but they're only gonna... I guess, I guess they'll be fine. They do have the Metamorphose and there wasn't much we could do about it. And now they have the Grape Shot in hand. They have Storm Count 12. Now, passed in Flames. Flames. They do have the mana for it. And they get to 30 is the question. Gifts ungiven. Got to be the remand at this point, right? That's the only way they get me. And I have to assume they had more than one remand. Up here through depths. So we just put in the rituals in the bin. Yeah. You, you generally don't want to give them rituals. They found another gifts ungiven. That's not. <laughs> they are at 20. They are at 20. wonder if they didn't have a second remand. Okay, they're grape shotting for 20. Do they have rem They must have remand, right? They wouldn't have done this without. I guess they don't want all those on the stack just so it doesn't look messy, but I'm pretty sure we're dead here. I'm pretty sure they just remand the grape shot and then recast grape shot and then we lose. Also, if they would have just remanded and shown me that they have another, you know, grape shot, I would have just scooped. And where's the fun in that? Grape shot to the bin. Oh, past in flames. Grape shot again. I see how they're going to do it. Okay. Oh no, they had a past in flames in hand. All right. We're just letting them have fun at this point, guys. Yeah, 24. <laughs> Woo! All right. They got their turn four, roughly 1 million. Okay. We have dampening spheres. <laughs> Uh, we have a Graft Digger's Cage. I don't know if we want to go harder on the hate than that. Uh, what do we don't want? Ginger Brood probably doesn't matter. Uh, Urza's Lord High Artificer is probably too slow for this particular matchup, as is Nettle Cyst. I kind of want to go as fast as possible. I think that's about where we're at. Because again, like, next turn we would have won. So let's see if uh, this will stop them. Now you might ask why I didn't put in Tormod's Crypts. Uh, and it's mostly because... Uh, I didn't put in Tormod's Crypts because I didn't want to go overboard with hate and have them take out Pass and Flames because Storm decks are able to do that. I don't think this is enough. This isn't much better, but how hard are we going to... Oh, this doesn't do anything. Sure. Uh, get rid of one of the tap lands. Get rid of... Yes, the Fogmite. I'm pretty sure we're just screwed here, guys. All right. The so player tap land. We have no hate pieces, even though we brought new ones in. Uh, we might just get stormed out pretty quick. It does take them a couple turns to set up, but again, we don't run interaction. We run player removal as our interaction. Serum Visions. It's been a minute, Serum Visions. On something helpful. Springleaf Drum is not it, Chief. Springleaf Drum and Springleaf Drum. <laughs> All right. Our opponent's door is wide open. They can absolutely wreck us if they want to. Here's Baral. Now we need to draw something good fast or we are just going to get stomped. Thought cast. Fascinating. We could play an Urza Saga Toka, but that doesn't actually do anything. We could just take our one blue mana and cast Thought Cast and hopefully find something that matters. We found Diddly. We found so much Diddly. All right, I think we are screwed. I mean, I guess Urza Saga can get a Graft Digger's Cage, but like they don't need the graveyard to go off his thing. Consider. All right, so they're probably not going to go off this turn. Probably, probably, probably. Oh, they are just going to go off this turn. Well, good for them. <laughs> I mean, we run a deck with no interaction, and while combo is pretty dead in modern, that's the thing about modern, despite what it feels like these days, it is 
a eternal format. So our opponent is well within their ability to play this deck that, again, like I know everything about S Storm. Like it was a major deck when I first started playing. And again, like don't blink because Storm can still win, especially if you're running no interaction. Now, nowadays, a lot of the decks are running interaction to take out their spell reducers. You know, there's a thousand uh, things such as uh, like Prismatic Ending, March of Otherworldly Light, Ley Lines Binding, because it needs these cost reductors to do stuff. Oh man, we drew another Misfail Bridge. We, we can't take our, actually, we're going to have, we can, we can make a blue mana. Is that what we want to do? No, we just want to, we just want to make one and hope our Thought Monitor draws into something of use. So we'll get Graft Digger's Cage. So now they're a little stranded, not a lot of stranded, but a little stranded. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we can just cast this. Nihil Spellbomb. That's actually interesting. We'll make a blue, tap him, bounce that to their hand. Try and make this as hard as we can. Now we are now out of action, but we, we had to try and survive here. I think we will have slowed them down for a turn based on what they did last time. They also didn't take Pass and Flames out of the deck, and we still have a Graft Digger's Cage. Now, if they have like a Repeal or an Unsubstantiate or literally anything, they can get rid of the Graft Digger's Cage and just go to the races. But we were really hoping to find a Dampening Sphere. Okay, we get another Bite at the Apple. Find another Urza Saga. So this Urza Saga is the one that's going to help us close out the game. Unfortunately, we drew so many lands. <laughs> we could stop drawing lands, and we could draw literally anything else that be great. I don't think Thought Monitor Beats are going to get there, but next turn we do make quite the big Urza Saga token, and then the turn after that we make another big Urza Saga token, and we also get to make uh, the Shadow Spear guy crunch in. Now, he does have a million mana, and we are out of action. We have nothing in hand. We have lands. The Graft Digger's Cage is, is holding on for dear life, but this is where we're at at this exact moment. <laughs> You know, jo join me while we, you know, grab the seat of our, grab the edge of our seat. Oh no, we win. Okay. I'm surprised we won. I don't, I don't think there's anything else we want to do. I think this is pretty fine how it's running right now. Um, man, those Tormod Crypts are looking real tempting, but like, what do we take out put in a Tormod Crypt? I don't think there's anything we want to take out. I think we want everything that's in this deck right now. We want the numbers that they're in. Like there's an argument for Soldier's Companion instead of, well, maybe we'll take out one Soldier's Companion. Companion. We'll put in one Tormod script and we'll cross our fingers and see how we do. All right, we get to game three, which is probably the best we could hope for given the situation. Don't it take a while to see if they uh, like their opener? I'm very happy I have this Tormod script all of a sudden, like aggressively happy. So we'll keep, I mean, it's not as good as Graft Digger's Cage. Don't get me wrong, like at all. <laughs> What do we draw? We draw Mem Knight. Well, go my little zero drops. Go. There's a saga will come out next turn, which is fine. But for now, we have a pretty decent spread. They're going to play some sort of cost reducer because they kept their opening seven. Goblin Electromancer. That's a thing. I think on the draw, we're just a little too slow to stop them, if I'm being completely honest. So there's Urza Saga. Here's Mem Knight. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we can actually cast it. So we have a, a Soldier's Companion. I don't think they'll go off next turn. They can go off turn three. I don't think think they're going to. You know, with the Tormod's Crypt, I think they need to play a little bit more slow, if you get my drift. The only thing that stops us from playing Urza Saga is if we, like, top deck Graft Digger's Cage, or we top deck, like, a Dampening Sphere. Ooh, they had to play a Tap Land. That's gotta hurt. All right, looks like they're passing at that point. They might have stumbled enough for us. What do we draw? Not a land. Please, not a land. Springleaf Drum. All right, well, that's what I get for not being specific enough. <laughs> Springleaf Drum. I mean, we're gonna make a big Urza Saga token. They can just win, though. Make no mistake. Oh, they're going to do it now. Interesting. I mean, they can they can go off at instant speed, so I don't know why they didn't want an untap. That's interesting to me, but I guess they don't want an untap. I guess they're worried about Graft Digger's Cage, but like I wouldn't have had Graft Digger's Cage on their turn either. Or they just wanted me to play out all my spells and that adds to the storm count, huh? That's probably why they did it now, because the storm count was increased by me playing out my stuff. But we really only played one spell, so that's a thing, isn't it? So we'll put Empty the Warrens and and wish into the bin again. Well, they only have one mana. I guess they can have more rituals in hand. We'll get rid of Mana Morphos. So now they have a wish and another Gifts Ungiven, but they only have one mana, so they'll need more rituals in their hand to do stuff. Also, wish is a sorcery, so they can't do it right now. Okay. So, 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 they have four mana. They have Goblin Electromancer. They have a wish and a Gifts Ungiven. I have to assume... Okay, there's a ritual, sure. Passed in Flames. This feels like an early Passed in Flames, but, like, we can't 
can't just let them get free stuff. All right. I mean, again, I'm sure they did that because it had no effect on their plan in the grand scheme of things, but like you don't just let them have it. And again, that that one of Tormod's crypt has done us pretty good. Uh, now they're just going to play their rituals in so they can do it again with Past and Flames because they've already committed to Past and Flames. So their other card in hand is, yeah, Gifts Ungiven. Again, opponent is good. And this is just one of those things where our opponent gets, uh, oof, um, no Metamorphose, no Desperate Ritual. I mean, they actually get to do them as many times as they want, truth be told. Thanks to Past and Flames just living on the stack. So they get to do all that again, and they have a wish. Storm counts at six, seven, eight, and Amorphos. They get to draw a card. Wish, they get to go get something. I wonder what they're going to go get. They just play Gifts Ungiven from the yard, targeting me again. I have to assume at this point they have it, otherwise they wouldn't keep doing this. It's probably pretty deter deterministic, but hey, I mean, it's just how she works. So get rid of Gifts Ungiven, get rid of Metamorphos. They have unlimited mana, so we just don't want them Gifts Ungivening roughly a million times. It's also interesting to see how quickly Mon modern cards like if they were just a little bit cheaper would have you know gone to the moon they have two cards in hand they wished something okay grape shot or 14 they must have remand i suppose the mistake there was not playing out urza saga turn one just to put the graph diggers cage in play i suppose wanting the the token was green right show me the remand actually no they have a past in flames they're just gonna pass in flames so yeah we just kind of uh got stormed out it's it's been a while since that's happened not gonna lie but hey more power to our opponent. Uh, played pretty tightly, didn't have to wait too long. So then they just cast Past and Flames. Yep, and they get to cast Grape Shot again. Oh, I like how they're going for style points. Bravo style points. It would be funny if my last card was uh, Luster Storm. Boy, would it be hilarious, but... Unfortunately, it is not. I really wish Miko would show you the card they wished for. Yep, and we're dead. Man, our hate pieces were absolutely nowhere to be found. I can do this all day, and we wouldn't see them. Wow, okay. Uh, are they in the bottom half of the deck? Okay, there, there they finally are. <laughs> bottom 28. All right, let's go on to the final match. Hey, we lost a die roll. What else is new? This hand is fine it's not amazing but it's not bad it doesn't do any of the unfair stuff it just plays a bunch of creatures so we'll see how quickly we can get these creatures out opponent plays mutavault into aether vial so it seems like we're up against merfolk let's see what's faster um our opponent is on the play uh relic of progenitus doesn't really matter so just play our tap land and pass and then next turn we get to play out a whole bunch because we play our two one drops and then we play the two frogmites i don't think we'll quite be at free soldier's champion as of yet but we'll be getting pretty close sliver oh it's not murpho oh my god it's so much worse it's slivers send you sliver okay so they're playing the lord one and not the cascade one i could never make the lord one work these days so if this guy beats us playing slivers i will tip my hat to him all right so play springleaf drum play relic of progenitus now we get to play the flower frog mites for free one two three four five six so we can just make a blue, tap the frog might, play the thought monitor, draw two. Uh, we can play this for free. All right, that was our turn two, opponent. What's yours look like? <laughs> I mean, if they play another sliver, it, it actually does stop our frog mites. Oh, is it the flying sliver? Yep, okay, so now they fly. So we can block exactly one and they get to just lord us in the face if we're being honest. Although if this just becomes a race, I'm all about it. Okay, play another lord. Diffusion. Oh, we are not targeting anything, buddy. You just played a bear is what you did. Let me let me tell you how much interaction I run. I run zero. Another Gale Rider sliver. Okay, so I mean, the race is on if that's what they want to do. They are more than welcome to race me. Okay, they're on defense because they're not silly. A thought cast. So we have two, we have three mana essentially. We are going to thought cast and see if we can find more stuff. Urza. Urza next turn for right now, free frog might. Do we thought cast again? Because we don't have enough to cranial. I think we just thought cast again. Urza Saga. Okay, well, I'm glad we found that. Now we do what? I think we can play. The other Springleaf Drum. We can make another blue, tap one of our frog mites. Just thought cast again. Play Memnite, play Shadow Spear. I think we do just swing. Actually, no, because their their muta vaults become three threes. Hey. So they just get to eat anything but the Soldier's Companion. So we will swing the Soldier's Companion. If they want to do something with the Soldier's Companion, they will do. Okay. Can they deal us 20 on turn four is the question. Or do we start gaining life with our Shadow Spear? Nope. They scoop. 
how do we stop slivers? <laughs> I don't think a single card in our deck matters. Um, well, the relics don't do anything, so they can come out, but, like, what do we put in? Do we put in, like, Haywire Might? Metallic Rebuke? They have... I guess we could try the Haywire Mites? I don't think this is correct, but we'll try it. Oh, no, our opponent just decides they're done with the match. Um... I think this video is long enough. I've had enough people run away that I am just going to call it there. Let's go to the wrap up. All right. So we played six games. A um, couple people ran away early, which is unfortunate, um, but they're prerogative. The deck's strong. We all know affinity strong. We all know affinity is good. Um, I'm, I'm just going to talk rather than about the deck in general, because if you want to play affinity, absolutely. It's a good deck. I think this is more about the individual pieces and, and how I kind of saw them perform here. Now, when I was playing mono white affinity, we were playing four nettle cysts and they were actually very impressive. Now, there's an argument between playing nettle cysts and playing Urza Lord High Artificer, but you saw when Urza Lord High Artificer was good, it was great. It turned all of our things that were coming in that turn essentially into mock sapphires. And from that point on, we stormed out. Speaking of Storm, that's the one deck we lost against. I think that's very draw-go dependent, because both times he won, he won on turn four. Now, I think I might have been able to win that match if I had just jammed Urza Saga, which would have meant uh, on turn three... I would have been able to, you know, have the Graft Digger's Cage out because apparently our opponent was just on the graveyard version and that was apparently probably what won us game two. Um, as far as things that I'm kind of looking at, I'm going, eh, I don't know. Uh, the Hercules recalls are iffy. The Metallic Rebukes were never really great for me. We did end up winning that game against that green Stompy player, which is fun. But yeah, Affinity, it's a good deck. It continues to be a good deck. Is it a deck that's future proof? Probably not. When you have a deck like this that's so all in on one thing, i.e. artifacts, it only takes one hoser card to get printed in a Horizon set, and suddenly this deck doesn't work anymore. There are already hoser cards in the format in things like uh, Void Mirror and stuff like that, but honestly, not a lot of people play them, so you'll probably do quite good with this deck. This deck can take down Friday Night Magics, this deck can take down bigger events, especially if everyone is just playing slow, lumbering, mid-range piles, and you come in with your hyper aggro affinity deck. The whole thing about this is to try and win before your opponent's plan really comes into place and have your Urza Saga tokens be hilariously big because with the exception of like Urza and a single island, everything else is an artifact. And Urza, you know, the reason he's allowed in the deck is because he drops his own construct token. He docks his own construct token, which means he counts as an artifact. So again, this deck is fun. It's quick. It's interesting to me. It can grind if it needs to, especially when you have Urza in the deck. And I can't recommend it enough as somebody's first, second, third, whatever modern deck. Uh, again, Liam, I want to give you a shout out for requesting this deck. This is always fun to do. Thank you for the request. If you have a request, or if you're Liam and you have another request, go ahead and email me at heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. That's heydummyplaythis at gmail.com. And I will go ahead and catch you guys next time. Thanks as always for coming along. Bye.